All right, the moment we've all been waiting for in tough finally happened. Conor McGregor pushes Michael Chandler at the end of the episode. Why did it happen? You know, there was a lot of misconceptions leading up to this because I thought a totally different event took place. I'm going to explain more, but I was able to figure out early in the season, like, hey, that this report that we originally got was wrong. But like I said, I'm going to get into that later. But my question is, was this moment even worth it? Like, we had to wait six episodes. And my main concern, is this going to be the peak of tough? Like, because if this is the peak, then I think we have a problem. I made a video last week talking about my problems with the ultimate fighter i'm going to put it on the screen if you guys want to take a look and those problems still stand today and i did like that you know there's more interactions with conor mcgregor and michael chandler and you could tell that michael chandler was so heated up we're going to talk about all that and more but first i want to remind you guys please hit the subscribe button like comment and share for the algorithm you know you guys liking you guys commenting you guys might not realize but it actually does help the channel a lot help the algorithm realize hey that people are talking about this video people like this video also youtube wasn't really recommending my alexander volkanovsky versus Yaya rodriguez video that came out yesterday so i'm also going to put that on the screen if you guys want to take a look at that for UFC 290. Later on tomorrow, I'm going to be posting my Brandon Moreno versus Alexander Pantoja prediction video. So tune in for that as well. And then the next day, I should be doing Robert Whitaker versus Jekas Duplessis. But we're going to see what happens with that. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for the support. And let's just get into this video. All right, guys, the sixth episode of The Ultimate Fighter just took place. And we knew that this episode was Lee Hammond, Connor's top prospect, Connor's guy that he trains with at the gym. So you can imagine there's a lot of personal feelings in this matchup with Connor McGregor, which is probably what led to the ending, which I'm going to get into but at this point conor mcgregor is pretty desperate we know he's lost five in a row at this point he was facing off against kurt hollowbow of course a ufc veteran he was in the ufc twice before fought on dana white's contender series so it's basically been around the ropes and you could tell right from the beginning you know i could tell conor was super invested in this matchup like conor was you know really amping him up in the beginning of the episode really trying to train him and it kind of reminded me of the first season of the ultimate fighter with conor mcgregor when he had artem lobov on his team when artem was a teammate of his and it seemed like he was most invested in him than anybody else on the show and it kind of reminded me of that here too because it just seemed like connor was super super invested and yeah i guess it is funny now looking back about artem lobov obviously for those of you that don't know connor mcgregor and artem lobov now are no longer friends i have a video on that too if you guys want to check it out it was from a while ago but that's just who connor is i don't know if he's just having trouble really investing in this team you know obviously michael chandler shares that opinion which we were going to talk about later on obviously connor doesn't show up to the weigh-in he didn't show up to that meeting about the weight cut and this kind of has been building through the whole season michael chandler has been like hey where is this guy this guy isn't coaching his team and basically just criticizing his coaching now at the end of the day does an ultimate fighter coach really make a difference i don't think so these guys are here for what like about a month conor mcgregor nor michael chandler are going to drastically change their fighters in that period of time most of these fights are probably going to play out the way that they did anyway so i don't really think that conor mcgregor is like a terrible coach however you have to admit and i've been saying this from the beginning having a prospect team is definitely way worse than having a veterans team because this isn't a veteran where you know they're 35 36 37 been through everything no these are people in their early early 30s their prime their athletic prime while connor has you know a lot of 25 year olds and yes there are some older guys that you can pick out but for the most part you know they don't have that experience all these guys have the experience of fighting high level competition in the ufc like when you look at team or value of i mean that guy is a legit contender could probably fight in the ufc now but finally we get to the fight and we see lee hammond absolutely dominating the fight was it anything to rave about no like to me it was kind of he was just holding him down yeah, but he clearly won the first round and was winning like every minute of that second round until he got reversed Stuck his head up a little too high exposed his neck and got guillotined and mount and eventually lee had a tap even though there was like 90 seconds left and he was dominating the whole thing and conor mcgregor funny ass him but he just you know collapsed to his knees absolutely was just like devastated and was like now i'm 0 sick conor was very classy the guy that beat lee hammond but you know michael chandler once again he's like oh we're gonna keep stacking him up conor mcgregor gets in his face saying that a lot of people on michael chandler's team have been in the ufc for longer than even he has i don't know if he was trying to point out there that he has an advantage with his team which conor can't be mad at like connor chose the prospects you guys have to remember he literally chose that but i don't know if that's his way of saying oh you have an advantage or just basically just trying to diss him he also calls him a bellator tick because obviously as we know michael chandler really hasn't been in the ufc for long he got signed in 2020 he finally fought in 2021 so it's been a little over two years since he fought and eventually connor mcgregor you know pushes his face takes off his jacket like he's gonna fight dana white has to step in and separate them and i thought what was interesting afterwards is you know michael chandler left the octagon dapped up connor mcgregor's teammate and basically was like oh you have a shitty coach like I've never really seen Michael Chandler curse. Like, he was heated. 
I would have been there for you. I would have been there for you. He was like, be there for your fucking team. He was super mad. Conor McGregor was mad. And even Michael Chandler's teammates, the guys on his team were chirping at Conor McGregor. Hey, don't start talking now, you lose it. And basically, Conor just insulted all Michael Chandler's team, calling them all bums. Which, look, Roosevelt Roberts deserves this. Like, let's be honest. Like, Conor's going to beat you. Like, I don't know who he is talking. If I were there, I would, you know, just try to keep to myself. But I get it at the same time. You know, you're trying to stay loyal to your coach. Michael Chandler's probably done tons of things for them behind the scenes. And he's probably, you know, just very thankful just having his coaches back. So at the same time, I can't be too mad at it. But it's like, come on, you know, Connor's gonna fuck you up. But yeah, that concludes the episode. And Connor McGregor has two more episodes to finally get a win. Otherwise, it's literally going to be all Michael Chandler's teammates. And man, we could just see, you know, I never really expected Michael Chandler to get this mad at Connor McGregor. And I just think that Michael Chandler's a little fed up because obviously Connor has a superstardom, is really able to do whatever he wants. You could even see in present day, he's fed up about the whole USADA situation. Michael Chandler's like, why is USADA even coming to my door if Connor McGregor hasn't even signed up for the program yet? And I get it because from his end, you know, it's all uncertainty. He doesn't know, hey, am I going to fight Connor McGregor in December? Should I be looking for a different fight? It's all just uncertainty right now. And I don't know what's going on with Connor McGregor and the USADA situation. I've said before, I know a lot of you guys say, hey, he's never going to fight again. He's not going to fight this year, but I think he's going to fight in December. I think it'll wind up happening. I just think, unfortunately, it'll probably be breaking so many rules because at the end of the day, USADA is a terrible system. Connor McGregor is a superstar. He's going to get away with it. So I do think that they're going to fight. And honestly, like I said, I think Connor McGregor will win this matchup. Like, I don't think him coaching is really a reflection of him as a fighter himself because I have seen a lot of people make this comment and I kind of agree. Connor McGregor kind of coaches to his style, which kind of makes him a bad coach if we're going to be honest. But he doesn't realize that not everybody could fight like him. Like, you notice every single person he gives the same advice to, he doesn't really hone in on their skills and try to help them utilize their skill. Instead, it's like he's trying to make them like little versions of him. But at the same time, you have to realize also Tough is probably cutting out a lot of stuff. It's a reality show at the end of the day, which is why I said it should be on Hulu so they have unlimited amount of time so they don't have to focus on making it 45 minutes on the dot with all the commercials. I think it should have been on like a Hulu or a platform like that or Disney Plus, but I've said this a million times. If you guys want to see more about what I think about The Ultimate Fighter, like I said, click the episode last week where I talked about the episode as well as my many problems with the show so far and it's complete trash like please can we all agree that espn the app sucks on like a playstation or a roku or even your phone it just sucks i would say it's like bearable if you're watching it on a computer but if you're watching it anywhere else it sucks and at the end of the day how many casual fans are really invested in the ultimate fighter so you want to make it as easy for them as possible to watch but all in all, it was a good episode. I'm glad we got to finally see that chub. This episode got leaked. I actually was able to avoid the spoilers. I did figure last week Lee Hammond was going to lose because if you guys remember the initial report about the shove was reported that Conor McGregor's teammate got knocked out with a flying knee and basically that's what kind of caused it. As we know now, it's a guillotine, not a flying knee. They probably got confused with the second episode where Amanda Gutierrez got knocked out with a flying knee. So whoever reported it probably just got their facts mixed up, but it happened. It's here. Guys, let me know what you guys think about the Ultimate Fighter. What do you guys think about this season we are officially at the midway point episode six and now we got six episodes to go and so we're gonna get into the you know the finals the semi-finals so yeah i'm excited for that thank you guys for watching if you guys new to the channel the subscribe button like comment and share like i said we're trying to 20k by the end of the year thank you guys for watching you guys are the best fan base in mma and i'll see you guys in the next one